You know, there's a point to where a paint job just can't be saved, but that doesn't mean that it's too far gone to repair or restore. If paint jobs are not your strong suit and you might feel like you're in over your head, don't worry. There's ways to learn how to restore paint and bodywork yourself. And there's always ways to get it ready for someone else to take care of. You've got to know how to qualify a shop before you hand over your baby, uh, but you could save money in the process getting it ready for someone else to paint. I grew up around auto body repair and it's been a part of my career for a long time. As a matter of fact, LMC Truck has been offering my how-to videos for years for people that want to do it themselves. But I totally get it if you feel intimidated with the process of doing your own body work, especially a complete paint job. The truth is, it takes some experience and specialized tools and equipment to do the job properly. So sometimes it's just a deal breaker when the paint job looks bad on a potential project truck. But I want to show you some options when it comes to a paint job that looks like this. So just like everything else, this starts with planning. Planning starts with an inspection. So I'm going to take a lap around this truck and show you a few things to look out for. And then we can discuss ways to repair the problems or getting it ready for somebody else to repair. Handing over the keys and saying, hey, call me when it's done, it's expensive. And maybe you've got more time than money. And maybe you want to just try it yourself. Right now, let's just take a look, see where we're at. I've got a list here of all of the body panels and an opportunity to make notes off to the side. And I'm just going to follow my list and inspect each body panel. A couple of things I'm going to bring with me. I'll explain this, but a soft towel, some masking tape, a couple of different colors of Sharpies, my glasses, because I'm old, and a flashlight. Look at the tailgate first. So here, it's actually the only panel on the truck that's still got some gloss left in the paint, and it's easy. I can just kind of look at a reflection, and I can see a dent right there, and I can see a dent right there. Silver Sharpie on a darker paint, it shows up. Here's the deal breaker with this tailgate with this huge depression right in here. And it's all pushed in. And it's even dented up right here. This thing's been used like a truck. So the problem with that is that this is what's called a boxed panel. It's a really, really strong unit. It's the same thin gauge sheet metal as the big bedsides, but it's all squished together and stamped and it gives it a lot of strength. What that usually ends up meaning is that it's better to replace this part than it is to repair it. You're gonna have less time in it and less cost because time is money. Now, if you don't know what I mean by bouncing light, here's what I'm talking about. I'm positioning a triangle. It's a relationship between me, the observer, the panel, and the light source. The panel is the bottom of the triangle. I'm one leg of the triangle. The light source is the other leg of the triangle. I'm positioning myself about a 45 degree bounce between me, the panel, and the light. So that that way I can see the reflection of the light as I move my position and my eyes across the panel. Essentially, it drags the light across the panel and it creates a free inspection tool. We've got shiny paint on the tailgate and kind of shiny paint on the bedside. So we can use the light bouncing trick to inspect the outer shape of the panel. If you can't, like up here, there's no gloss at all. So I can run my hands across it and I can kind of feel stuff. Here's a way to enhance the way you feel things. Use a soft cloth, cotton works good. This Scott's towel works really good as well. What it does, oh, I can feel the dents better. What it does is it enhances, kind of amplifies the surface as I drag my hand across it, and I can feel the imperfections. Try this, it's a really interesting trick, but it, it works. So now I can feel a little dent there that I couldn't see because there's no gloss, and I can create a map. There's another one there. If you can't really tell with a cloth or with a cotton set of gloves, here's another trick. Even with a place like this, maybe you can't feel it with your hand. Maybe even the enhanced version of touching the panel doesn't show everything that you want. 
What do you do here when there's absolutely no gloss in the paint, it's faded out? Well, the answer is you replace the gloss. This is a wax and grease remover, or you can use a naphtha from a home center. It's in a pump sprayer, and what we're gonna do is just replace the gloss that the normally shiny clear coat would have had. So now, when we pull our light across, look at there, look right, right there. Oh yeah, there it is, right there. There's a big dent, you see that? You can see the depression that we couldn't feel right there. So now that gives us the opportunity to see it, confirm it, and mark it. And the solvent just dries off. I like to use the solvent cleaners like naphtha or wax and grease remover as an inspection tool a lot better than water. It's thinner, it stays wet longer, and it sheets out flatter. And you can use your Sharpie and mark through it. I've got all my panels marked out. I've got a clear path on how to fix all of them. And I found something that I missed on our first inspection. When we bought the truck, I thought we had a rust-free truck. We don't, right here, right here. It's very subtle, but there's some bubbling rust. Right, yeah. So now I get the opportunity to show you how to do rust repair without a welder. I'm using a 24 grit disc on a common electric drill, because we're not only gonna show you how to do this rust repair without a welder, we're gonna show you how to do it without air tools and a compressor. The inside of the patch tells us a lot. Check this out. So for the two places that it's rusted through, there's a whole lot of rust on the back side, but right here where it changes color, you know that's good metal underneath. So almost all the way around, We've got fairly solid metal, except for, well, right there at the corner. It's really important to have access to the backside of this cab corner so you can properly get rid of all of the rust. So now, a little bit more cutting to do. Using wire brushes, sandpaper, whatever it takes to get in behind the patch that you just cut out, you've got to get the bare metal exposed and you've got to get it very clean, get all the surface rust off of it. All right, so I know the back side of my metal looks good and clean, and it's got a nice abrasive tooth on it, about a half inch back. I'm gonna do the same thing on the outside of the perimeter, and then the magic starts. Any exposed surface rust that you're not gonna be replacing can be coated with POR15 paint. This really does a nice job of holding back the rust and chances are the POR is gonna outlive the rest of the truck. I'm using my cutout piece as a template on a new cab corner I got from LNC Truck. I'll cut along my Sharpie lines and then test fit the patch. We've already prepped in back here. We've got to prep the back side of the patch and then make our backing strips and glue them in. It's important to have a very aggressive scratch when using panel bonding adhesives. I'm also really cleaning up the edges of my patch and creating a slight bevel on the outside edge. I'm gonna create my backing strips from the cab corner patch. And we're gonna go probably, yeah, almost an inch in all the way around. What that does is gives me the same contour, the same basic shape that my whole panel is in the first place. And we're not randomly making patches. The saying is, eat the whole buffalo. Here's how this is gonna work. This piece matches the contour of the cab corner nicely, but it doesn't go on the top, it goes on the back side. So we're gonna slide this back here and you can see there's enough of a contact area behind this cab corner to have a good bond between the backing strip and the cab corner. And right here, we've got a really nice landing zone for our patch to go over top. That's the strength of this bond. It's called a backing strip. You've got one, two, and a quarter. <laughs> 
opportunities for adhesion. It's really quite strong, especially on a small patch like this. But you got to have access to the backside to clean it up and get your bare metal because you got a bare metal with an aggressive 24 grit tooth. I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to start working. This is a two part panel bonding adhesive. The two parts get mixed in the tip as it gets squeezed out. I'm back brushing it onto all the metal for corrosion protection once it's installed because you can't get to the back sides. I'll set all of my backing panels just underneath the outside metal of the cab corner. This creates a seat or a shelf for the patch. The small clamping pliers will hold the backing strips in place while the adhesive sets up, which, depending on your glue, usually takes about 10 minutes. We've kept an eye on the clock. It's been about 20, 25 minutes, but it's always a good idea to check your adhesive that you've laid out on your board. You can always tell how cured or how dry it is. This is good and dry, so we're ready to unclamp and move on. After a little bit of adjusting the backing panels, we've got a nice smooth transition to the top, the side, and the bottom, and even on the back side of the cab. This is not going to finish the patch. We're still going to do body filler on this, but this gets the metal back to integrity. So in order to clamp this on, we're going to do the same thing we did with the self-drilling screws. We're going to do one here and one here, maybe one on the back side, and that is going to get us our clamping force for the adhesive from the top side. I'll squeeze the two parts out on my mixing board without a tip since it got solid in the last tip and then I'll apply it by hand with a spreader in a very, very thin coat. Make sure all the bare metal is covered. Now we have a good uniform film of adhesive on both the backing strip and the patch. You don't want to be in a hurry, but you don't want to dally either. You've got to be efficient. We've got a fairly quick set, 10 minutes. So you want to make sure that you're cooking with gas. And that feels pretty good there. Super duper, let that dry. After another solid 20 minute wait, we pulled the sheet metal screws out and using our 24 grit disc on the drill, ground any excess adhesive off of not only the gap between the patches, but also the outside edges. Now we still have to use a fiberglass reinforced filler for the gap. And you saw me grind out the adhesive. You don't want to use your glue for body filler. It's not for that. It'll expand and contract differently and you'll see what's called a map through the patch. You don't want to see that. So we're going to use a fiberglass body filler here and for the little holes. I want to keep as much of the original shape and contour of this truck as possible. That way it's easier for me to blend a patch in. So I cut a small piece out and we sacrificed a little bit of sheet metal, but thank goodness this is a full cab corner that we got out of the catalog and we had more than enough to do a proper repair. Rust repair, no welder, no compressor. <laughs> Yay. We just knocked a big one off the list. The rust patch that popped up, we didn't even know it was there, but it's behind us now. So guess what? We're in the last category. It's a big one. It's body work and finish up. And there's gonna be things that pop up. There always is, but we're right down here, right to the end of the whole thing. Now. Even if you don't want to do your own body work, I've just shown you how to do a documentation of the damage on the vehicle so that you can walk into a place informed and educated as to what your truck needs if you're going to hand it off to somebody else. We're going to do a little bit better. We're going to show you how to do some minor dent repair and some filler and some primer and stuff like that because why not? I know you can do this and we're so close. Look, we're so close. <laughs>